On March 11, 2011, the strongest earthquake ever recorded in Japanese history hit the Tohoku region. When I saw the waves come in one after the other and houses falling like dominoes, it was like watching the special effects of a movie. In no time, the tsunami came crashing in, water flowing over our heads and passing us by. There were 43 city officials and residents in total on the rooftop, but only 10 of us, including me, remained after the tsunami passed. This unprecedented disaster took the lives of our friends, family, colleagues, and our precious lifestyles in the blink of an eye. Peace Wins is an international cooperation non-governmental organization that helps people in times of humanitarian crisis all over the world. When the large disaster struck the Tohoku region, they swiftly went on location to support. Only 18 hours after the earthquake struck, Peace Wins Japan managed to get their members on site. As I approached the sea, the town's landscape, or rather, the colors, began to change. It was easy to tell that the waves came this far inland. At that time, though, the debris hadn't been cleared out yet, so there were houses, cars, and things from inside those houses creating something that looked like a wall. When I shone my car light onto this wall of debris, everybody in the car had their breath taken away. They were stunned, silent. Many evacuation locations were using junior high or elementary schools. There wasn't enough of anything anywhere. So how could we get things on site as soon as possible? A lot of energy was used to figure that out. We led the way and instructed for things to get sent to this and that evacuation location. Upon arrival, we would unload the items and pass them on to the people in need. This is how we helped. Many people with their wish to save or help somebody, came in one after the other from both inside and outside of Japan. An American organization called Mercy Corps and our sister organization, Peace Wins America, were quick to submit an offer to help at the beginning. Very early after the disaster struck, their teams arrived in Japan. Peace Winds as a whole didn't have a lot of bandwidth, both in funds and human capital. We're truly grateful for the support. It's, it's been an incredible experience to watch Japan mobilize to respond to that situation, watch my colleagues at Peace Winds, you know, look at the situation and respond quickly and effectively and um, adjusting their strategy as they go and uh, doing what I think has been a, a, a great job and I think they have a lot to be proud of as they uh, step away uh, 10 years later. We wouldn't have been able to provide that much support by ourselves. Organizations from around the world with experience in disaster relief helped us. While supporting us, they respected Japanese culture and our way of doing things. For that, we are truly grateful. Peace Winds raised over a total of 1.8 billion yen for the Great East Japan earthquake. The number of volunteers reached over 8,500 people. This circle of support healed the damaged regions of Tohoku.
From a state of emergency to a state of restoration, support to get back to everyday life began. Peace Winds was looking for somebody to be in charge of supporting Minami Sanniku Town's fishing industry. I remember applying, thinking, this is something that only I can do. There was a big discussion with the mayor about how the town wouldn't be truly restored without rebuilding the fishing industry. With those words, I listened to the fishermen and the members of the Fisheries Association and started to create something tangible. We lost everything. So the fishermen headed inland to look for work, slowly parting away from the seaside. Peace Winds asked me to work with them on cultivating wakame seaweed. The region is renowned for wakame seaweed cultivation. The period of planting the seeds is around June or July. If we miss that, we won't be able to plant the seeds until next year. This means we'll miss our chance to harvest it. So in order to plant the seeds in June and July, we started by getting the right equipment in, one machine after the other. We sent a request for an order all at once. If I do say so myself, we were probably the fastest ones to send an order in the season. Since we were first, we were able to get good equipment, good tools, and top-class materials allocated to us. It was a great help to have all the facilities ready for us to use. in order to rebuild the everyday lives of the people living there as soon as possible. Efforts to restore the fishing industry started. The American NGO Mercy Corps helped by donating over 100 million yen for this effort. The way our programs operate is from people within Japan donating out of the goodness of their hearts. We also had support via donations from America as well. It was a relief to get the money so we could order the items we needed. I would like to thank everybody who helped us. I wouldn't have been able to do it by myself. Everybody who helped are wonderful people. With the help of these efforts, the port at Minami Sanriku town was able to return back to normal life little by little. However, Peace Wind's support mission was not over yet. By getting the right items we needed, we were able to think from a state of repair to a state of complete restoration. But how would we completely restore lifestyle infrastructures? We started to think about that from 2012. Supporting the community in this way perhaps didn't have a goal or wasn't the right answer, but I challenged myself knowing that it would probably take a long time. At the time, Minami Sanriku Town had a Silver Human Resource Center. They were very active in the community. The center, however, was completely destroyed by the tsunami. So many residents thought they should stop the center's activities. As they were busy with their own problems, we thought, as non-residents, we would be able to help there. That's when we created a group to support the senior citizens. With the cooperation of the residents, we created Viva Minami Sanriku, an NPO, and started our efforts from there. There was no place where people could gather. The tsunami destroyed all the public facilities and carried them away. A place where people could gather, a place where people could lean on each other's shoulders, a place where we could carry out activities, they created that for us. Many different people gathered there, created things, supported each other and tried their best given the circumstances. They gave us a place where we could recreate our community after the disaster. I am truly grateful for that. 
Viva Minami Sanniku decided that they would restore the Silver Human Resource Center in April 2021. It was then when I felt like I was finally reaching the end of it all. It's definitely one goal I've had in mind. Viva Minami Sanriku taking over the Silver Human Resource Center's activities has created a foundation for the center's revival. I heard the decision to actually revive the center is due to the support. We operate by going on site and the people on site continuing those activities and thereby helping on practical daily life level. I believe it to be one success. I never imagined that the town I was born and raised in would be destroyed like that and that I would be a victim of such a disaster. To be a part of the restoration of the town was a wonderful chance for me and that was with me for 10 years. Whether it was donation money or volunteering, I feel truly blessed. And I'm grateful for the experiences here. I want to say thank you very much. Uh, since we, we got a big earthquake and also a tsunami, a uh, big tidal wave uh, was coming to our coast. Uh, ten years has passed. So uh, we have accumulated many experiences. Uh, and also uh, by your effort and support, uh, we have got so much uh, energy and also uh, will to support those people in private conditions. When we face the problems uh, in the uh, epicenter of our coast, we saw so many uh, still dead bodies were floating uh, in seaside. And then we had a uh, a very little amount of money for those uh, people uh, deserted from their own houses uh, thrown up by tsunami. So uh, we were almost, you know, finishing up. Uh, but uh, we, we got uh, good news from the uh, United States of America showing, you know, uh, the, the support uh, is coming from your country to uh, our people in really bad conditions. So it was very joy and also hope uh, for all of us. And then, uh, still we are very uh, thankful to those, uh, to those uh, who helped us in, in uh, really worse conditions. Thank you very much. And in place of those uh, victims, also uh, we are very thankful to those uh, people who uh, supported us. And then uh, due to the very flexible way of budgeting, uh, we could support so many uh, people who could get you know, uh, their own small businesses uh, in uh, those uh, affected area. And we now see many people uh, recovering their own lives and also uh, making businesses and then uh, having a happy new life again. So thank you very much. Uh, all attribute to you. Thank you, thank you very much. We'll be ready for the next one. We remember 311.